What's up guys, Llama Pen here, and today I'm going to talk about something new in regards to shot passes. Last year I put out a video detailing how to use shots to pass, almost like more powerful saucer passes, and this year it works very differently, at least when it comes to using shots to pass in the offensive zone. As you guys know, when you take a shot in the offensive zone, your shot is automatically directed at the net. If you hold R1 or RB though, this allows you to manually aim the shot wherever you want. In years past, this worked well for rimming pucks hard around the boards, or even making long cross crease passes in the offensive zone. This year, however, if you manually aim a shot anywhere near a skater, they seem to almost always go for the deflection, similar to the slap pass. So while this pretty much means the end of making cross crease passes like this, it definitely opens up a ton of possibilities when it comes to shooting for tips. So if you've played 23 at all this year, you know that tips are back in a big way. Not only does it seem like guys are able to tip pucks more regularly, but they also seem to be able to find the back of the net easier with tips. If you've got a guy parked right in front of the net, maybe he's facing the shooter, screening the goalie a little bit, a simple wrist or slap shot on net can be a smart play. What I like about the R1 shots though, is that you can get tips on net from guys that are not necessarily near the net or in the shooting lane to the net. So with players increased ability to tip pucks, R1 shots allow you to get tips from players off to the side of the net, up in the high slot off to the side, and just in situations where you would otherwise not be able to get a deflection. Now I know what you're thinking, Llama, I can do this with slap passes. Why would I opt to use an R1 shot instead? Oh, that was just a regular slap pass. It was a regular slap pass. That was a regular slap pass. Oh, a slap pass. Yeah. So for one, if you're using a forehand or backhand R1 shot, you're going to be able to get the shot off quicker and more safely than if you were using a slap pass. These shots, um, as well as the R1 slap shot, also leave the ice as opposed to the slap pass which does not so they seem less likely to be intercepted if someone is near the lane with r1 slap shots there's also one tiny difference um, between these and slap passes which is that you can r1 slap pass loose pucks which is something that you for some reason cannot do with an r2 slap pass this isn't really a huge thing since there aren't many times where you would even have the opportunity to slap pass a loose puck, and there's even less times where this is the optimal play, but it is something to consider. Knowing the differences between the backhand R1 shot, the forehand R1 shot, as well as the R1 slap shot is important because they all have varying speeds and elevations, which will determine what scenarios you use them in. The backhand R1 shot, for instance, has the highest loft, the lowest velocity, and it also travels the shortest distance. So I normally use this uh, for plays where the teammate I'm aiming for is both somewhat close to me and also pretty close to the net. Because the backhand shot is so soft, that means the deflection is going to be soft as well. Also consider the loft and the fact that this is the most likely R1 shot to be called back for a high stick or fly over your target. So if your target is a little further away from you and maybe a little further away from the net, I would consider using the forehand R1 shot. These shots are going to be less lofty, but harder, and they're also going to be directed at the net with more velocity. These seem to be the easiest to get. We're freaking them out. really not hard here. Although you do want to make sure you've got some distance between you and your target, otherwise the puck will just fly right by. Lastly, the R1 slap shot works basically the same as the slap pass. If you don't know how to do the slap pass, by the way, I do have a tutorial video for that on my channel, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. So you do have to wind up for the slapper, which is going to take longer than the forehand or backhand R1 shot, but you get a really hard shot that gets deflected on net at a similar speed which means you're going to be able to score with this more easily and the player deflecting the puck doesn't necessarily need to be right next to the net for you to get a good scoring chance. As I said before, you are able to get this to work on loose pucks as well. So to do this, just go up for a manual slap shot, 
So hold in L2 and then hold back on the right stick to make your skater go up for a slap shot. And then while still holding L2 and the right stick back, press and hold R1 and then skate up to the loose puck, flick the right stick forward to shoot and then aim where you want that shot to go with your left stick. Make sure you go up for the manual slap shot before you press and hold R1, otherwise this is not going to work. The person deflecting the puck has a part to play as well, so opening up with L2 or LT and facing the shooter is going to make your player tip the puck more consistently, and attributes like hand-eye as well as the big tipper trait are going to make your skater even better at tipping pucks. So the grinder is the only EASHL build with big tipper available uh, as a gold ability or a silver ability, and they have it available as a gold ability, so that makes the grinder the best option. The still isn't going to work every time, but these things, as well as being the right distance away from the shooter and the net, are going to give you your best chance. I will say that AI goalies are freakishly good at stopping these chances, but human goalies are going to have a lot of trouble stopping good R1 deflections because they're deceptive and pretty easy to get consistently. So anyway guys, that's how to use R1 shots in the offensive zone to get deflections. Me and my buddies were able to get some really crazy ones pretty far away from the net, um, some other ones off of loose pucks, and then we even had a couple where the shooter started behind the net and we were able to get tip shots from behind the net. So I think this just opens up tons of interesting possibilities, especially like I said against human controlled goalies. So if you like this video, then be sure to check out, like I said, my slap pass tutorial video. I will say slap pass as well you know, I highlighted the differences between them and R1 shots. They seem to score more, um, and I'm not sure why that is, um, but definitely check that out. And also check out my Shot Pass tutorial from last year to get some context for this video. Stay tuned for more content like this. I hope you like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Do a give and go to open it up. Oh! Yeah! <laughs> that was it. This is tight. I might make a video about this. I'm, I'm making a video about it. <laughs> That's so <laughs> sick. <laughs>